Hey guys, uh, it's Sam here, um, so I'm doing another review today, uh, but I also might be doing some more reviews throughout this week just because a lot came out this, this weekend and all of it is actually kind of interesting to talk about in some sense. But today, right now, uh, we're going to be doing a review for Hotel Artemis. The most violent riot in California history. The largest civil unrest. Three minutes. Open the ball now! Oh, that's real nice. You don't want it? No, I really do. Uh, hit the ground now! I need to make a call. Hello. How can I help? So taking place in the near future, uh, Hotel Artemis kind of follows the titular hotel, which on the 12th floor holds sort of a secret hospital for criminals that they can go to uh, whenever they need to be patched up, cleaned up, and ready to get back out there. And it's run by an older woman played by Jodie Foster, uh, and she runs it with her bodyguard nurse sort of person played by Dave Batista. Um, and on this particular night, uh, multiple criminals have come have come into the uh, the hotel, not only looking to be patched up, but also looking for refuge in riots that are taking place in Los Angeles. Also, at the same time, the kingpin of LA is coming to the hotel, and is and many other events are not only stressing out the other criminals in the hotel, but is also stressing out uh, Jodie Foster's character who may have to break some of the rules that the, that the hotel was built upon. So Hotel Artemis has a really great ensemble cast and it has some really great writing in it, which makes it disappointing that it never really fully utilizes these. It never becomes something greater than a concept. One of the biggest problems with the film is that it feels like it's trying way too hard to look cool, if that makes sense. It, it feels like there's a lot of backstory we don't have. It feels like there's a whole world out there that we're not exploring. But all the characters know about this world. All the characters know about their relationships. And we don't really get an insight. It's all alluded to. It's, it's a lot of people looking at each other, alluding to past events that we don't know about. And that's why it's difficult to care about the other characters. And all the actors are doing a good job. Sterling K. Brown does a good job. Sophia Patella, as always, does a great job. Charlie Day, while he's fun, is kind of unnecessary. There really isn't a reason for him to be in the film. He just he's he's in it so little anyway. You could have easily just almost could have cut him out. It's, it's so jarring he's there. Zachary Quinto is in there for a bit and he does a good job. Uh, the trailers are really slaying the fact that Jeff Goldblum's in it. He kind of plays that kingpin of LA I mentioned earlier. He's literally in the movie for about five minutes, and that scene in the trailer where he comes in the elevator. That's basically his scene. He really doesn't do that much afterwards. The true heart and soul of Hotel Artemis is Jodie Foster and Dave Bautista. Um, not only their relationship, but them individually really sell this film. Uh, Jodie Foster does a great job playing sort of an anxiety-ridden, agoraphobic ex-doctor who is dealing with her tragic past and trying to maintain this hotel and help other people. And she's so good. She's so charming. She's so likable. Um, and she does great in these emotional moments. And while we never really get to know the hotel, we never get to know the rules of the hotel, which is another problem. We understand why she likes it. We understand that she cares for the hotel and it really is her livelihood. So just by proxy, we kind of care about it. And then Dave Bautista is just a charming guy in general. I mean, Dave Bautista is so good not only in this, but in most of the roles I've seen him in. It's a great job kind of playing the, the mountain type character, sort of this, this bodyguard um, who kind of takes no BS. He's just doing whatever he wants, but he truly, he honestly cares about Jodie Foster and about this hotel and you can, you can really feel it. And so any scene with them, is really well done, their acting's really good. Those story elements are really well developed and really well explored and, and, and make you care about them. But none of the other character elements are done well. Sterling K. Brown's character is simply at the hotel because his, his brother and him were doing a heist and it didn't go well, and now they're here. And I guess maybe his brother has, has, has held him back a few times, yeah. Sophia Patella is there for a mystery reason that is going to be sort of explored, but we know that she and Sterling K. Brown had a relationship. We don't really know that much about it, we just know it, it existed. Charlie Day, I don't really know what his deal is, he's an arms dealer, and, is, and he got a cut in his face. I mean, there's just so little to go off of. The film does feel hollow in that sense. There are long stretches of time where it's just people talking in vague terms and like cool sounding dialogue and nothing really substantial is done. And then by the time I got to the end of the film, I just kind of thought, I, I just thought, what was the point of that? I was very unsure of why this film need to be made. There's so many 
thematic things and story-wise things that they could have developed further. I mean, the riots in LA, these riots are happening because of the privatization of water and they don't do anything with it. Nothing comes from it. Um, there's a big buildup of Jeff Goldblum as the king of LA and he's taken over and there's loyalty and trust and there's a lot of talk of loyalty and what that means and and of, and of bettering yourself. Even like forgiveness and, and, and kind of self-worth. It's just not handled very well. The, the pacing is so weird. You never, you spend so much time with Jodie Foster and Dave Bautista and then they'll cut back to other characters and you almost forgot they were there. They try to make us care about them and it just, it does not work at all. And honestly, just, and because of that, the, the dialogue scenes, the majority of the film is kind of boring. At least I, I wanted to care. I wanted to know about these people and I, I can't, I don't, the, the movie won't let us. The movie wants to make us think they're cool, make us think that this is so interesting and it just is not. And I know the trailers, the advertising is selling this is a big action movie and the action doesn't happen until the last like five, 10 minutes. And even then it's kind of generic and tame. Um, Dave Bautista does get, a, just get an ax, which you think would be really cool, but they don't show any of the violence. They don't show it ever happening. Um, Sophia Patella has an action scene because she has to in every movie she's in. And this has convinced me even more that she needs her own action movie. If I don't get Sophia Patella led action film, soon i'm gonna be very upset and it's not an incompetently made film i mean the actors are doing, are doing a good job it's well shot there's some great lighting there's some cool ideas i'd love to see explored more it does feel like drew pierce the director and writer had this idea for a film and for a world he knows what's going on he knows how this all works together he knows why it's cool but he can't convey that to the audience and it really is the problem with the film. It's 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 something that I think if you saw like on DVD or on Netflix, you'd have a good time. And it feels like the biggest problem with Hotel Artemis is it doesn't have any central theming, or at least any themes that are different or unique or fully explored. It feels like a lot of ideas were thrown in here and nothing was really done with them. And that is sort of the worst part is that there is a lot here. There's a lot to do with it. And, Maybe I'll have a better time if I see it a second time. Maybe maybe, maybe it'll be more enjoyable the second time now that I know what to expect, but right now it really does feel hollow, I guess. It feels, it, it feels like they, it feels like Drew Pierce and his film crew was attempting a lot of style and that would get them by, but the style is not enough to maintain this film. But it's, it's not something worth seeing in theaters. It definitely is sort of a lower budget film uh, with a really interesting idea, a really interesting location, but nothing substantial really happens with it. Uh, it's just kind of there, and I don't know what to say about or what it's trying to say, and, and, and that kind of sucks. All right, well, thank you all for watching. Um, what did you all think of Hotel Artemis? If you saw it, did you like it? Did you not like it? Uh, did you agree? Did you disagree with me? Um, leave a comment. Uh, don't forget to follow me on Twitter, maybe send me a tweet there. And also don't forget to go to the Commonwealth Times website, uh, read some articles about local VCU news, and also catch up on some of the older reviews that I've written. All right, well, hope you all have a great rest of your day and take care. Bye-bye.